Welcome to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne Kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne will teach you how to do this through building high self esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness, as well as other useful free gifts for you. In this episode of Claim Your Excellent Life, we're going to talk about marriage. When do you stay and when do you leave and how do you know the difference between the two? This is something that's been coming up quite a bit, both on Quora, where I answer a lot of questions, and also I've dealt with it a lot in my practice, as well as in my own personal life. So the first thing that we need to recognize is that it takes two people to make a marriage, and it takes two people to break a marriage. Now, most people get married because they believe in some fantasy life of being taken care of or being always together with one another or whatever. Well, reality check number one is that no one person can take care of another person. It's not their job. One needs to have friends and activities and things that they enjoy beyond the marriage. And then you have the things that you do together that you enjoy together inside the marriage. Over time, all that infatuation of the oxytocin, which is really the bonding hormone, goes away, and John Gray suggests that you wait at least two years before you decide to get married because that's about how long it takes for the oxytocin to wear off and you actually get to know each other and stop not seeing the red flags that are always there that we don't want to see in the beginning of a relationship. Great advice. He also says that it is the woman's job Tell the man what makes her happy and for the man to make her happy. That goes back to the provider instincts that men have. He needs to know that he is wanted, that he has a position there with you, that he feels like he is there doing something for you and with you. Otherwise, he is not going to be fulfilled as a man. And a woman needs to be appreciated for her efforts and for caring and sharing and loving and listening and being present. Each has their own piece to add to the puzzle. Over time, you learn how to really like one another, be with one another, and to also have your alone time and your time with your friends. That's a healthy relationship. There's so many times that people get into relationships and they feel like that one person's supposed to do everything with them. Newsflash, no one person can take care of all your needs, nor is it their job. And it's not your job to take care of all their needs either. People have friends for a reason. Women need girlfriends in which to talk and share things and get advice and input, hopefully healthy people with healthy ideas. And men need companions to do those things that they enjoy doing. And in my marriage with my ex we had friends that we had in common we did a lot of things together with our friends a lot of times it was single woman and we just go out and do what i call day away so we'd go out for breakfast and then we'd go to a museum or something and then we'd have some lunch and then we'd have a snack and then we'd have dinner together and it was just a lovely lovely day that we'd spend together with these people it was fun and a lot of times it was one at a time and sometimes we had gatherings in the house sometimes it was brunches sometimes it was fancy dinner parties, and sometimes they're just parties where I had a bunch of people bring a bunch of stuff and I would just make the main meal and the dessert. And those were a lot of fun. The idea here is that we each are our own person and we each have our own things that we enjoy doing and we each need our own space, but yet there are those things that we need to come together to do together. Then there's the whole issue of children. One never forces another to have a child they do not want to have. And that was one of the things my ex actually thanked me for never forcing him to do against his desires. Because I didn't want any kids. I had enough issues when I was in that age, mental health issues and physical health issues, and I saw what my sisters went through, and I saw what my best 
friend had gone through raising his kids, and thankfully, his kid is now my kid, which is great, <laughs> you know, didn't have to birth him, didn't have to pay to raise him, but we're really close, and that works great for me, and it works great for him, too. So, whoever said you have to have a kid to have a kid is wrong. I am proof that that is not the case at all. You just have to be there when they're growing up and show that you care and love them up and let them know when they're acting out and hold them accountable and do fun things with them and everything is cool. But that's a different story. And then there's this whole idea of affairs. What do you do when a person has an affair? Some people, like in my situation, my ex knew that if he ever had an affair, he was out of the house. For other people, they're a little bit more humbled by it, realizing that, truthfully, if you go through and study anthropology, men are supposed to go out and spread their genes all over the place. But we're supposed to be thinking human beings, and we're supposed to have feelings for the people that we say that we are committed to, and to think before we act. So I'll leave it up to the individual person to decide what is correct for them. Because the one thing I can tell you is that once the trust is broken, it's pretty hard to get it back, if ever. So, should you stay or should you leave? How happy were you? Is it fixable? Are both of you willing to work on it? I mean, really, take responsibility for your share and what's working and what's not working and work through it. Or is it just so old and done and you just moved on and you have different ideas of what you want in your life and you're growing at different paces and you just want different things in life and that's fine too. And in that case, it's probably better that you separate and go your own direction. You'll both be happier for it. Trust me on that one. Hopefully you found this to be helpful. And as always, I thank you for spending your time with me till next time. If you have enjoyed Claim Your Excellent Life, We'd really appreciate it if you go over to iTunes and give it a five-star review. If you have found Claim Your Excellent Life to be helpful to you, and maybe even life-altering with the information that we have shared here, and to allow us to continue this work, which we really do enjoy doing for you, you can sponsor us at patreon.com. That's spelled P as in Paul, A-T-R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Again, that's P as in Paul, A-T as in Tom, R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com, where there's a few different levels of sponsorship that you can choose from to help us to continue doing this work. We thank you for any assistance that you are able to give us. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Claim Your Excellent Life with your host, Suzanne kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne teaches you how to do this through building high self-esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self-esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness, as well as other useful free gifts for you.